All right, welcome back everyone. Dr. Ben, not a real doctor here. Let's talk about breathing, or more specifically, what I've learned about breathing over the past eight months of breath hold practice. So back in April of 2022, I took a breath holding course with Erwan LaCour, and I have experience with breath work and you know, I've been an athlete my whole life, but I've never really, really focused on breath hold practice. And I've learned so much about breathing and how it affects you emotionally, how it affects you physically, how it affects you mentally, and how, how we spend so much time breathing and so little time even conscious of how we're breathing and what it does to us. So this has been a really, really amazing experience for me. And I just wanted to share some of the things that I've picked up. Like I said, I did take a breath holding course with Erwan LaCour. I'll put a link to his, he now has an online course. This was a live course, uh, but he now has an online course that's available. Highly, highly recommend it. You're gonna learn so much about breathing uh, physiology and breath holding. If you're looking for a little lower entry point, I do have a practical breath work course, which is not breath holding, but it's some of the foundational stuff that goes into breath holding. That online course is available on my website. It's in the description down below as well. So let's talk about breathing. Breathing seems really self-explanatory, right? You breathe in, you breathe out, oxygen goes into your blood, waste products come out and you breathe all that out. But it's really a lot more complicated than that. Let's look at carbon dioxide first. Often considered just a waste product, but it's actually extremely important as part of cell respiration. As your carbon dioxide levels get higher, oxygen is transported into the cells more easily. As your carbon dioxide levels get lower, it gets harder and harder for your body to exchange gases. That's one of the reasons why if you do Wim Hof breathing, you're doing you know 30 to 40 breaths, you're breathing out, taking big inhales, you start to get dizzy and lightheaded. You're expelling all your carbon dioxide. And what you're experiencing is actually a shortage of oxygen within the cells because you don't have enough carbon dioxide for cells to take up oxygen. As your body goes through its normal metabolic processes, carbon dioxide levels build back up, and then that sort of dizzy feeling, that buzzing goes away because again, your cells are getting oxygen. Now we have a set point, our brain controls it. It's a set point of carbon dioxide that tells you you have too much carbon dioxide, you need to breathe. You can change this set point. So a lot of times if you're feeling out of breath, you're having a hard time catching your breath, it may not be actually that you're out of oxygen. There's a fun little device called uh, a pulse ox monitor. Hold that thought. So this handy little dude here is a pulse ox monitor. You put him on the tip of your finger and he measures the amount of oxygen in your blood at the tip of your finger. So like really extreme distance from heart and brain. So you can see here saying 97%, right? And generally, like anything over 95 is fine. Nothing to worry about. There's nothing going on there. I have held my breath for my current maximum, which I haven't tried to do again in months, is four minutes and 37 seconds. Although now I pretty comfortably handle four minute holds. Even after holding my breath for two minutes, this pulse ox monitor generally hasn't really changed much. So what that means is even after two minutes of holding my breath, the level of oxygen is still, there's still plenty of oxygen in my blood. I'm not short on oxygen. What's telling me that I need to breathe is those rising CO2 levels. Okay, as those CO2 levels go up, your brain's like, oh my God, we have too much CO2. We need to breathe, we need to get rid of this. You can change your set point. If you are feeling out of breath, if you are having a hard time breathing, if you're breathing 20 times a minute when it should be more like eight at the high end, um, you are probably breathing shallow regularly. Your brain has changed your CO2 set point to a lower threshold than what is healthy. And you would really, really benefit from doing some basic breath work to just reset your CO2 point. So much of breath holding is mental work, all right? As you're holding your breath, as you're laying there and things are starting to feel a little tingly and your body is telling you that you need to breathe and it really gets to the point where you're like, I'm gonna die if I don't breathe. Your brain is telling you this. And 
What you really, really learn from breath holding, and disclaimer, don't ever practice this crap in the water. I do this laying on my couch in my living room, sometimes with a blanket on, because it's, you know, like, you can get chilly, make yourself comfortable. Never, ever, ever, ever practice this in the water unless you have qualified, competent, responsible supervision. Because if you practice this in the water and something goes wrong, you will die. Okay, disclaimer done. So as you were wrestling with your sympathetic nervous system, it's trying to convince you that you need to breathe and you're going to die if you don't, you learn some really, really handy coping strategies to de-escalate your nervous system and remain calm in what is in your brain's, brain's perspective, a life-threatening situation. I feel so calm and relaxed after breath hold practice. It just, it's one of those things where I can tell a difference in the days where I do practice compared to the days where I don't practice. And it makes, honestly, it's made me a better person doing breath hold practice just because I've learned, I'm generally pretty, pretty even keel, but I've, I've gotten even better at regulating myself and calming myself down when I get worked up knowing how to deal with a situation to get myself back under a control, or I guess I don't need this anymore, to get myself back under control if things are getting out of hand a little bit emotionally or mentally or even physically. It's, to me, it is an invaluable practice. It is a meditative practice. I think everybody can benefit from it. Um, and I highly recommend that you at least experiment with it even if it's just from the standpoint to become more conscious of your breathing. It can do so much for you to improve your health on a day-to-day -day basis, just having more conscious control of your breathing, developing a more natural breathing pattern. And if you are a, an athlete or if you're active, you can improve your performance so, so much by just focusing on your breathing, practicing your breathing, training your breathing muscles. And it's just, it doesn't take lots of time because once you work on these things, your body is going to pick up those patterns and do it regularly. It's also really handy to deregulate or um, to deescalate your nervous system. Great for going to sleep at night. Great if you need to wake up in the morning. There are so many benefits to this practice. I just, I can't recommend it enough. Um, the long and short of it is that I've been doing this fairly regularly for about eight months. When I took the class in April, I set my own personal best record. I went from a minute 57 breath hold as my maximum at the start of the class. Four weeks later, I held my breath for four minutes and 37 seconds. Now I pretty comfortably hold my breath for rounds of four minutes. Um, it's not comfortable per se, but uh, I don't, I don't feel like I feel like I have quite a bit of time left at the end of four minutes, we'll say that. I live at 6,000 feet, so that translates if I go to sea level, I'm gonna pick up a fair bit of time on breath holding. I would imagine if I were to really push myself and go for another maximum attempt, I would probably be around six minutes at this point would be my guess. But even if you don't care about your maximum breath hold time, there is benefit to this practice. If you have experience with breath holding, I'd love to hear your practice, your thoughts, your comments down below. Uh, again, I will link to Erwan's course in the details. And if you would like to do a little bit more cost, we'll say cost effective, we'll say a lower financial investment entry into some practical breath work, my course will be available down in the bottom details as well. Anyway, that's all I've got for you today. I appreciate you guys, each and every one of you. I hope you had a great Christmas or Hanukkah or whatever you celebrate. We're coming up on the new year, so happy new year. I hope everybody has a great time. I hope everyone is safe and I will see you in the new year. If you liked the video, smash that thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing. And if you know someone who can benefit from this info, just share the video with them. Till next time and until next year, keep your life in motion.